fellow scientists. My name is Paula, and I'm the Youth Services Librarian at the Zimbardo Public Library. Welcome to Silly Science! Today, we're going to make a soda geyser. To make a soda geyser, you will need two liters of the soda of your choice. I chose Diet Coke. You will need an unopened bottle. You will also need Mentos, the mint flavored ones specifically as they cause the best reaction. You will also need a piece of tape or a needle and thread or a piece of paper. And then we're ready to make our soda geyser. The first thing you're going to do is stick seven to 10 Mentos onto your piece of tape or thread them onto your thread with your needle or you can take a piece of paper and make a funnel. It doesn't matter which way you choose, it's just how you're going to get your Mentos into your soda as quickly as possible. Once you're outside, place the bottle of soda on the ground and open it. Then you're going to quickly drop your Mentos into the bottle and get out of the way. I have got my safety glasses on and a smock because this experiment can be very messy, so you should definitely do it outside. Are you ready to do it? Let's go make a soda geyser. Here we go. That was pretty cool, wasn't it? The science of the soda geyser reaction is pretty straightforward. It may look like a chemical reaction, but it's actually a physical one. Carbonated drinks get their fizz from dissolved carbon dioxide, which is pumped into the bottle at high pressure to make it dissolve. The average two liter bottle of Coke contains about 15 grams of dissolved carbon dioxide. So 15 grams of dissolved carbon dioxide are in this bottle right here. When you open a bottle of soda or any carbonated drink, you release the pressure. You know that sound that makes when you open a bottle of soda? That whoosh sound? That's the sound of the pressure being released. At this lower pressure, the carbon dioxide is less soluble and it starts to leave the drink in the form of small bubbles. Adding Mentos to the bottle drastically speeds up the process. Take a look at one of your Mentos. It looks smooth, doesn't it? If you were to look at this Mento under a microscope, you would see pits, peaks, and craters, kind of like the surface of the moon. These pits, peaks, and craters are also called nucleation sites. They provide a place for the carbon dioxide bubbles to form, and they allow the bubbles to form much more quickly. So when you drop these Mentos into the Diet Coke, there's more surfaces for the bubbles to form on. That's what causes that geyser reaction. The 15 grams of carbon dioxide in that bottle might not seem like very much, but as it comes out of the bottle, it can expand to take up to four times the volume of the bottle. So that would be if we were to line up four bottles next to each other, that's how much carbon dioxide comes out. This explains why when the formation of bubbles is rapidly increased by the Mentos, a geyser of soda shoots out of the bottle. There's nowhere for the bubbles to go, but up. If you wanna change up this experiment, you can try using different kinds of soda. Does diet soda cause a different reaction than regular? What about the number of Mentos you put in? Do more Mentos cause a bigger reaction? Try making your own soda geyser and let us know how it goes. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Silly Science at the Zimbaroda Public Library. We hope to see you again soon.